everyone it's kelly here back with another video here on uh the curatorially yours youtube channel um this is a booktube channel we talk books here and uh today i'm going to be bringing you a book haul and boy oh boy <laughs> do i have a lot of books to show you uh most of these books have sort of been acquired in the month of October though a couple have sort of just arrived just into November I'm recording this on about I think the 5th of November so um it has been we've been collecting the books wait are there more books here no yes oh god <laughs> oh god so many books uh let's add some more to the stacks shall we so many books um, so I'm ready to share them with you now. Um, so I've sort of vaguely split them into categories. Let's start with the secondhand books that I acquired. So part of this stacks of things just falling beside me. Um, part of this, uh, haul came from a, a holiday that I took and I always love to go, um, secondhand book shopping and also to check out the local, um, uh, independent book shops and things like that. So I, very excitingly, acquired um, some secondhand books from that and also just a couple of other ones. I ordered a couple from uh, World of Books and other things like that. So let's start with one that just arrived yesterday. Um, that is Gentlemen Prefer Blondes by Anita Luce um, with an introduction by Candace Bushnell, who is famously Sex in the City. This unfortunately is not in great condition um, and also it is somebody has annotated inside mostly in pencil but sometimes in pen which is a bit annoying. Um, so obviously this was some somebody's book that they were studying. Fall semester 2008 I think. So anyway by the by um, I've got a lot of books to show you. I don't know why I'm dilly dallying. Uh, so this is the book that the film was based on with um, Marilyn Monroe, I believe. Uh, and I think I have seen at least bits of that film, but I've not actually ever sort of read the whole, um, or I, I don't think I've ever watched the full film. Um, and I certainly haven't read the book because I didn't know a book existed until um, I think I heard it recommended on a booktube channel and if I remember who I will put it on the screen and put a link below. Um, so basically it's 1925 and this book is based on a character called Lorelei Lee, a not so dumb blonde whose taste for orchids, champagne and diamonds was so single-minded as to make her seem almost innocent. Sent abroad to be broadened by her protector, a Chicago button manufacturer, Lorelei meets the Prince of Wales and mixes in English society. In France, she stays at the Ritz, shops in the Rue de, P de la Paix, and is taken to the Folie Berger. In Vienna, she comments, Dr. Freud said that all I needed was to cultivate a few inhibitions. Finally, back home, Lorelei marries a mainline millionaire and becomes a movie star. So this is sort of like set out like a diary and I am looking forward to reading this at some point um, because it seems like an enjoyable sort of romp. Okay, I'm going to start making a pile back here. <laughs> um, this one I think I picked up secondhand. Um, it's in really good condition, which kind of makes me think it was, maybe it was new. I can't remember. Anyway, this is um, Kaleidoscope by Brian Selznick. And uh, this is, uh, Brian Selznick is a fantastic um, author illustrator. Um, who has these really beautiful um, sort of possibly charcoal, possibly pencil drawings um, that are included throughout this book. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to um, reading this one at some point. Um, and hopefully enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying looking at the pictures. Uh, so that's that one. Then we come to the books that I picked up while I was secondhand shopping on my holiday. Um, so I got Severance by Ling Ma. I got uh, I Couldn't Love You More by Esther Freud. Below Deck by Sophie Card Hardcastle. 
good old Shruggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Uh, this is an interesting one that I picked up um, called Cooking for Picasso uh, by Camille Aubrey. This keeps coming up in my recommendation, kept coming up in my recommendations um, for on the story graph. And I just saw it in the shop. I was like, well, I guess I've got to get it because <laughs> obviously the algorithm thinks I'll enjoy it. So I've got that one. And then this one, let me just pop these down. This one is called Dear Son, The Letters of Joy Hester and Sunday Read, uh, edited by Janine Burke. Um, Sunday Read is a person who I am interested in learning more about. I have a biography of her and her partner um, that I have not yet read. Um, so I'm interested in that, but yeah, when I saw that this was, um, her name was there as well. That's why I've picked this up. Um, so these two friends corresponded, um, I believe. So let me just give you a bit of background. Um, Joy Hester was the only woman member of Angry, Angry Penguins, Melbourne's radical art coterie in the war years and the wife of Albert Tucker. Sunday Reed was her closest friend, a wealthy and charismatic patron of the arts. So Sunday Reed and her partner um, were patrons of the arts. So they, you know, funded a lot of arts and sort of lived a kind of bohemian lifestyle back in the um, 40s, 30s, 40s, possibly. Um, so, yeah, it's just this is just correspondence between the two of them, but it just sounded like it would be super interesting and would kind of give a bit of insight into these women as people um, and their lives at that time. Because um, I'm quite interested in the sort of like arts, the bohemian art scene in Australia. Um, so, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to getting to this one. Um, okay, then uh, we get on to the one, another secondhand one that I bought, um, which is was a recommendation or a book that sounded really interesting to me after I read Books That Made Us, which if you've watched my previous um, video, which was my wrap up for October, which I will link up in the cards. Um, I mentioned that I had read that book and that I'd gotten some books for my TBR. This is one of them. Um, so that was very interesting to me that I hadn't heard of before I read that book. So this is Banang by Kim Scott. Um, and this is the story of, um, and this is what fascinated me about it when it was being described in the other book, um, essentially this is about, uh, so Indigenous Australians, Aboriginal Australians, and it's, um, there are, there was a, a man who was sort of like a, in the, in the government, I believe he was like the protector of Aboriginal people. Um, and he sort of w was writing at the time. This is set, uh, this is back in the, in the past, uh, still affects Aboriginal people today, obviously through, um, generational trauma and sort of the effects of, of these attitudes. But he was writing about, you know, breeding out, um, Aboriginality out of people, um, over generations and this story is about a white man who takes who was like that sounds like a good experiment and basically does it in real life um he attempts to with his own family um so the concept of that so then this uh this is told from the perspective of the grandson of this man who is doing this experiment he finds out about it and it's sort of like his you know how he kind of reframes his thinking about his family um and and so on so th it just sounded like a terribly sad but very interesting book and I am very keen to get to it at some point in the very near future so that's Benang by Kim Scott and it was a winner of the Miles Franklin Literary Award then we get on to the books that I got brand new. Ooh, let me move my stack. Can you see that? You can. Okay. I got a set of three classics um, in editions that I um, thought were really beautiful. I chose ones that I didn't already have a really beautiful copy of. I didn't necessarily want to get all of them because there are a lot of books in this series that I already have really beautiful copies of. So I just chose these. 
um, The Wind in the Willows, Alice in Wonderland and Treasure Island because I didn't already have gorgeous editions of these. But like, look at these covers. So they're a naked hardback um, with gold foil and beautiful illustrations. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased <laughs> to have these. So these are, the cover illustration of this one is by Claire Shorrock. They're all by Claire Shorrock. So well done to her. Um, beautiful, beautiful illustrations on the front covers. Um, so these are a collector's edition, uh, Wordsworth collector's edition, if you're looking for them yourself. Um, highly recommend. They're really beautiful. The text is also really well spaced um, as, as well, so definitely very readable as well because sometimes I find with um, you know box sets and you know some of these nice editions of things that they tend to be a bit um, you know small spacing and so on and really hard to read whereas these seem like a good deal um, so definitely worth looking into okay more 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 <laughs> Um, this one just arrived quite recently and it's a book that I ordered a while ago now and it's only just arrived. Um, it's about the author, uh, sorry, the author, the artist, Georgia O'Keeffe, um, and it's written by Marsha Herreros, um, part of the Art Masters um, series. So this is a graphic novel of the life of Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, and... I'm very much looking forward to reading it. She's a, um, an artist who I admire um, and I, you know, think is a very interesting person. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of learning more about her life. I mean, I've already read some uh, biographic material about her. Um, but, yeah, I'm really interested in learning um, more about her and, you know, sort of engaging with the illustrations as well in this book. So looking forward to that one. Content warning, I'm about to talk about a part of female anatomy, just FYI. Um, this is a book that I recently heard about called Vagina, a re-education by Lynn Enright. Um, and the Irish Times call this, calls it a genuinely empowering book. So this is um, a non-fiction book. And uh, let me just read you a context for this book and why it's important and why it needs to exist. Um, from earliest childhood, girls are misled about their bodies, encouraged to describe their genitalia with cute and silly names rather than anatomically correct terms. They grow up feeling ashamed about their periods, about the appearance of their vulvas, about their own desires. Um, and this book is here to provide information um, about all of those things um, and to destigmatize them. Um, so, you know, the fact that I even felt the need to give you a content warning that I was about to talk about vaginas is, um, you know, I think indicative of the culture in which we live. Um, so really important book and I'm looking forward to reading it and, um, you know, feeling empowered <laughs> about my own body. <laughs> All right, then we get on to some more fiction. I do have a little bit more nonfiction coming. Um, this is a book that has just come out, although it was written in 2017. It's by Shankari Chandran, who um, is a person I know. I used to teach her son um, a few years ago, uh, and it's called Song of the Sun God, and I can't wait to get to this. I Next year is going to be my Shankari Chandran year. <laughs> I am finally going to get to her books and I'm really excited about it. Um, so this one is about a young couple um, who begin their married life in 1946 on the eve of Ceylon's independence from Britain. Arranged in marriage, they learn to love each other and protect their growing family against the backdrop of increasing ethnic tension. Um, so this is sort of like the decisions that they ha need to make in that um, in that time of, you know, upheaval and, and change um, and, you know, what that's going to mean for them and their family. I mean, have a look at the, this beautiful cover. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and I'm very excited to get to that one. Man, this pile is getting tall. <laughs> um, another very recent release is this one by Craig Sylvie. It's called Runt. It's a middle grade book. Um, and Craig Sylvie is the author of 
a book that I absolutely adore called Honeybee that I read a couple of years ago now. Um, highly recommend Honeybee. Um, and I, so he's now an auto buy author for me, um, just because of how brilliant um, that book is. So I'm looking forward to getting this. It's had really good reviews so far, um, and I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, um, heartwarming, wholesome, all the rest. Um, so that is Runt by Craig Silby. A poetry collection I've just picked up is Insomnia by Linda Pastan. Um, I saw somebody share on Instagram, and if I remember who it is, I will link it below, um, shared a little bit of this uh, of poetry. I looked up the, po the poem and found out what collection it came from and then instantly ordered the, the book because I'm really excited to um, get to reading this one. I do love reading poetry um, and it's always exciting to find a poet that you didn't know about um, to read more about. So that will be great. I then got on the bandwagon <laughs> and purchased uh, Babel, Babel, I say Babel, by R.F. Kuang. Um, and this is a fantasy or sort of a, I would say maybe a, maybe dark academia is probably the genre that it belongs in um, because it's set at Oxford University. And um, I really loved the uh, tagline, an act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Um, and so this is uh, set in Oxford, uh, in Babel, University, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? Um, I really am keen to read this. I know it's been getting really good reviews um, all across the internet, so I'm looking forward to getting to this one. Um, yeah, so I saw this one in an independent bookshop when I was travelling and um, it was the only book that I sort of was drawn to buying so that's the one I always like to buy a book when I go to an independent bookstore um, just to support the business and to you know keep keep them in, in existence um, because if we don't go to them and we don't buy books from them they disappear and that would be a tragedy for us all so independent bookstores please 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 okay I think my my tower is getting a little high let's give it a go though I don't think it's going to fall down um, another book that I've picked up is A Marvelous Light by Freya Mask um, mystery, magic, murder. Marvellous, says Alex E. Harrow. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting to this one. This is also a, um, a fantasy, but it has a, an LGBTQI plus romance in it as well. Um, it's got magic, it's got all sorts of things like that. So, um, we've got a young baronet called Robin Blythe, um, who is in already in a spot of bother. He's struggling to be a decent older brother and a responsible employer and to rescue the estate ravaged by his late parents' excesses. Then an administrative mistake appoints him parliamentary liaison to a secret society and he discovers magic lies beneath the reality he's always known. Soon Robin must contend with magic's dangers as well as its beauty, for as he tries to find his missing predecessor, he attracts a deadly curse. To navigate these hazards, he'll need the help of Edwin Corsi, his prickly magical society counterpart, but his aloof associate clearly wishes Robin were anyone and anywhere else. Drawn together by unexpected perils, Robin and Edwin will discover a mystery as old as the power that binds the land, a plot that threatens every magician in the British Isles, and a secret that some have already died to keep. Doesn't it sound amazing? I'm really excited. <laughs> I really, really want to get to that one very soon. Uh, two more to go. This one is The Poetry Pharmacy, Tried and True Prescriptions for the Heart, Mind and Soul by William Seacart, um, uh, who is the editor. So this is a collection of poems by many different um, poets, and it's organized by uh, particular issues that you might be facing. So for example, it's got a section on anxiety, on compulsive behavior, depression, old age, purposelessness, uh, inertia when alone, a lack of courage, insecurity, guilt at lot not living in the moment, 
living with difference, oppression, all sorts of things. Um, so the idea being, you know, you're experiencing something, this book will have a poem to speak to that moment in your life. So um, I heard about this book on the Lena Norms um, YouTube channel. Um, I am a subscriber to um, Lena Norms. She's brilliant. Um, so I'd encourage you to go and have a look over there. She does bookish content and other stuff as well. Um, so, you know, if you haven't already heard of her, which of course you have, um, <laughs> probably most of you who are watching are here because of her, um, because I'm part of her Patreon group and you are too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, she's brilliant. And, uh, this book, I am very much looking forward to being able to draw on. It's not one that I would necessarily read in a linear way. I'd probably just use it as it's intended. Um, there is a follow-up to it, which is on my wish list. So at some point I will get that. Um, but for now, happy to have this one on my bookshelves. And the last one, which I also may have heard about on Lena Norms, I'm not 100% sure, is Sew It Yourself by Daisy Braid. Um, 20 pattern-free projects and infinite variations to make your dream wardrobe. So I feel like I heard about this one on Lena Norms as well because she was sewing a dress based on a pattern from here. Um, so, yeah, basically this is, I don't know how to use patterns when I sew, um, but I can make shapes and measure them um and follow instructions to a degree so i feel like i i'm you know excited to be able to um make some interesting stuff uh from this book at some point in the near future so hopefully i don't just let it sit on my shelves and not use it um because i really oh that one was exciting i would love to have a cross back apron <laughs> it's very cottage core um yeah, so very cute, very cute things. There's clothes projects, there's um, accessory projects. Uh, there are, yeah, and then the first part is kind of more like getting started and getting your supplies and sort of how to how to do things, how to cut things out, how to um, how to do sewing projects basically. Um, and all of the like little bits and pieces that you'll need to learn to do as you go. So hopefully I will get some use out of this book. Okay. Do I dare? It's very shaky. <laughs> and I'm definitely not going to hold up this stack um, because I don't think I have the physical strength to do it. Um, but this is my book haul for um, October. I am have made a decision and I'm going to tell you about it for accountability purposes that I am not going to buy any books in the month of November. None. Because this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I read eight books in the month of October and I've acquired Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 books. 21 books. That's, I'm not, I'm, that's not okay. <laughs> so there will be no purchasing of books in the month of November other than perhaps gifts for other people. Um, but none for myself, that's for sure. So I'm making myself, if I see something that I'm really keen on, I will, I can put it in a wish list if I really want to, and then I'm going to have a think about it over the month and decide if I really, really want to get it. I don't need to impulse purchase. I don't need to go into any secondhand bookstores in this month. I have so much to do, <laughs> um, so much to get done. Uh, and I'm a very busy lady, so I don't need to go shopping um, for books this month. So there will be no purchasing, none at all. Hopefully, I mean, there may be some things that are still to come that I've got um, on pre-order and things like that, but yeah, there'll be no more purchasing. I'm telling you so that I make myself do it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this ridiculous, excessive book haul for the month of October that is far, far too much. Um, but yeah, I can't be stopped. I can't and won't be stopped. <laughs> Um, so hopefully it's at least been enjoyable for you. <laughs> and I am very much looking forward to getting to these books at some point. Some of them will be more books for my collection that I will get to in the, you know, sort of um, further away future. Um, others I'm very keen to get to really quickly. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting to these books and, uh, you know, hold me accountable here. Make me read these books next year. 
That would be amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.